Welcome back to our centre. A school teacher in Massachusetts, the United States, who uses Harry Potter in his storytelling course, has gone viral for his response to a student questioning about J.K. Rowling's supposed transphobia. Warren Smith was asked, do you still like her work despite her bigoted opinions? What happened next was a very swift and forensic lesson in critical thinking. Let's define bigoted opinions. What opinions are bigoted? Live your best life. Do you find that transphobic? I'm just going with what a lot of other people have said. At the beginning of this conversation, you said, given the fact that J.K. Rowling is transphobic, how do you feel about Harry Potter? I feel like an idiot now. <laughs> well, after the video was shared by Elon Musk, it's now been viewed over 40 million times on Musk's platform X, with tens of thousands of comments heaping praise on Warren for his masterclass and how to think for yourself. And Warren Smith joins me now uh, from Massachusetts. Uh, Warren, well, first of all, congratulations on having one of the biggest viral uh, <laughs> things that I've watched all year. Secondly, are you surprised? Um, because it's, it's really captured, I think, a mood of people desperate to see teachers behaving this way, where you didn't take a position. You simply laid everything out and let the student reach th their own conclusion. Yeah. I am absolutely surprised by this completely. I never expected this at all. This came out accidentally. Just We have interactions like this on a daily basis. This one just happened to be captured on camera. Um, we were conducting a, a, a broadcast at school. I teach multimedia and I teach students how to work with camera and how to be on camera. And the student was getting cold feet to do the newscast. And so I said, I'll show you it's not difficult. We'll do a little warm up and here, I'll just sit here, ask me whatever you want. It's just a conversation. What's something interesting that we could talk about? You know, what's on your mind? And that's the question that came out and you saw the rest unfold. It was really fascinating to watch the student and credit to the student who was prepared to listen to you. I think because of the, the non-hostile environment you immediately created, uh, was able to go on a kind of journey of exploration. Now I've been crying out for uh, schools and universities to, to follow this path where students can actually debate these things in a good environment, hear other sides to an argument and reach maybe a better conclusion than the echo chambers that fly around fueled by social media. And it was great at the end that he sort of realised in the end there was nothing really as offensive as he'd presumed from the kind of toxic atmosphere around J.K. Rowling. I think that's why the video resonated, was that you see in real time a transformation, a journey with a beginning, a middle, and an end. And he does come to a realization, and the realization is larger than J.K. Rowling. This is about more than J.K. Rowling. It's the realization that he is his prior assumptions. He was going off of, well, I've heard that this is true. So many people have told me that this mm. is true. And when you experience that for yourself and it crumbles, then you have to question logically what else am I assuming to be true yes. that perhaps might not be, and that changes the way you view the world. Yeah, com completely. It's a great reaction uh, to you. A guy called Vincent Lindeboom said, let's build an AI version of this teacher, duplicate him as many times needed, and have everyone learn and understand how to think, not what to think. And a guy called Lance said, interesting, I don't see him dressing with multicolored garments or weird hair, no piercings or visible tattoos, looks in relatively decent shape, in control of the classroom and discussion. Is this what the left calls toxic masculinity? Because we need more of it if it is. <laughs> That's such a coincidence that you brought up that quote. That's the quote that actually stuck out to me the most because he said reasonably in shape. And I thought, reasonably in shape? <laughs> in what? Re in reason to what? Perhaps we'll provide some... Uh, Critical thinking on that. <laughs> well, trust me, compared to me, you look yes. in uh, Olympian shape. Um, what's your message to, <laughs> to other educators around the world who maybe have been heading to a bad place where they've been almost teaching dogma, um, fueled again by maybe what X is saying or what Instagram or TikTok is saying? What do you say to them? Do not be afraid to allow these conversations to occur because these students have the ability to do what you saw in that video mm. and to reason their way through these things and to learn new ways to advance through life, but they will not be able to do so if not given the opportunity. Sometimes it just takes the right questions, just a little bit of prompting and leading by example. It's pivotal. Allow them to happen. Don't live out of fear. Not dissimilar, actually, to the art of parenting. 
I can tell you. I believe you. I don't have kids at the moment. Yeah, I've got four you. of them, and I can tell you the same strategy actually works. If you just shout at kids and bark at them and tell them what they should be thinking and doing, I think you end up with you know kids who are quite damaged. If you allow them the freedom and the space to reach their own decisions and conclusions and thought processes, everybody wins. Um, and talking of everyone winning or not winning, I see that you agree with me that Barbie shouldn't have been nominated for a Best Picture Oscar. That just once again shows you have uh, absolutely impeccable taste, Warren. <laughs> well, I, I admire what they were able to do. It was extremely creative being able to do something like that with a movie about a doll, Barbie. But the question is, what lens are we examining? What does an Oscar mean? What's the lens that we're looking at this through? And I do think that it comes down to the technical, artistic prowess, that intangible, elusive thing that cannot be replicated. And we've given enough money, given a large enough budget, you can go build a big Barbie house on a back lot, but something like Braveheart, uh, mm. Titanic, there's certain, it's much difficult, much more difficult to replicate. Yeah, yeah. completely. Um, finally, you specialise in Hogwarts, Harry Potter. I, my oldest son is absolutely addicted to them. He can recite all the movies from the audio books, blah, 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 blah. I've never watched any of it, not my thing at all, but we've got 40 seconds. What is the best life advice you can give me from all your Harry Potter studies, which will enhance my life? Voluntarily accept the unknown and enter the unknown beneath the surface. Perhaps it's the Chamber of Secrets beneath the, the surface of Hogwarts to face the serpent and save Ginny, the thing that will, serve, that will turn you to stone when you see it out of fear, perhaps. You've got to face it and you can't be forced to do it. You have to do it voluntarily. That's what's gonna make all the difference. Wow, Warren, you've almost, you've almost converted me. Almost. Uh, Warren Smith, great to talk to you. Keep up the great work. We need more teachers you like you. Much. And it's a privilege to have you on the yes, show. Sir, thank you. you can watch uh, Warren's full video on X. Thank Go you. look it out, it's great.